Thomas Edison Inventions and Projects Fluoroscopy Edison is credited with designing and producing the first commercially available fluoroscope, a machine that uses X-rays to take radiographs. Until Edison discovered that calcium tongue state fluoroscopy screens produced brighter images than the barium platinocyanide screens originally used by Wilhelm Röntgen, the technology was capable of producing only very faint images. The fundamental design of Edison's fluoroscope is still in use today. Although Edison abandoned the project after nearly losing his own eyesight and seriously injuring his assistant, Clarence Daly. Daly made himself an enthusiastic human guinea pig for the fluoroscopy project, and was exposed to a poisonous dose of radiation. He later died, at the age of 39, of injuries related to the exposure, mediastinal cancer. In 1903, as shaken, Edison said, Don't talk to me about X-rays, I am afraid of them. Nonetheless, his work was important in the development of a technology still used today. Tassimeter Edison invented a highly sensitive device, that he named the Tassimeter, which measured infrared radiation. His impetus for its creation was the desire to measure the heat from the solar corona during the total solar eclipse of July 29, 1878. The device was not patented since Edison could find no practical mass market application for it. Telegraph improvements The key to Edison's initial reputation and success was his work in the field of telegraphy. With knowledge gained from years of working as a telegraph operator, he learned the basics of electricity. This, together with his studies in chemistry at the Cooper Union, allowed him to make his early fortune with the stock ticker, the first electricity-based broadcast system. His innovations also included the development of the quadruplex, the first system which could simultaneously transmit four messages through a single wire. Motion Pictures Edison was granted a patent for a motion picture camera, labeled the Kinetograph. He did the electromechanical design while his employee William Kennedy Dixon, a photographer, worked on the photographic and optical development. Much of the credit for the invention belongs to Dixon. In 1891, Thomas Edison built a kinetoscope or peephole viewer. This device was installed in penny arcades, where people could watch short, simple films. The kinetograph and kinetoscope were both first publicly exhibited May 20, 1891. In April 1896, Thomas Armett's Vitoscope, manufactured by the Edison factory and marketed in Edison's name, was used to project motion pictures in public screenings in New York City. Later, he exhibited motion pictures with voice soundtrack on cylinder recordings, mechanically synchronized with the film. Officially the kinetoscope entered Europe when wealthy American businessman Irving T. Bush, 1869-1948, bought from the Continental Commerce Company of Frank Z. McGuire and Joseph D. Borkus a dozen machines. Bush placed from October 17, 1894, the first kinetoscopes in London. At the same time, the French company Kinetoscope Edison Michel A. Alexis Werner bought these machines for the market in France. In the last three months of 1894, the Continental Commerce Company sold hundreds of kinetoscopes in Europe, i.e. the Netherlands and Italy. In Germany and in Austria-Hungary, the kinetoscope was introduced by the Deutsche Osterreichische Edison Kinetoskop Gesellschaft, founded by the Ludwig Stollwerk of the Schokoladen Fabrik Stollwerk and Company of Cologne. The first kinetoscopes arrived in Belgium at the fairs in early 1895. The Edison's Kinetoscope Francais, a Belgian company, was founded in Brussels on January 15, 1895, with the rights to sell the kinetoscopes in Monaco, France and the French colonies. The main investors in this company were Belgian industrialists. On May 14, 1895, the Edison's Kinetoscope Belge was founded in Brussels. Businessman Ladislas Victor Levitsky, living in London but active in Belgium and France, took the initiative in starting this business. He had contacts with Leon Gormant and the American Mutoscope and Biograph Company. In 1898, 
He also became a shareholder of the Biograph and Mutoscope Company for France. Edison's film studio made nearly 1,200 films. The majority of the productions were short films showing everything from acrobats to parades to fire calls including titles such as Fred Ott's Sneeze, 1894, The Kiss, 1896, The Great Train Robbery, 1903, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, 1910, and the first Frankenstein film in 1910. In 1903, when the owners of Luna Park, Coney Island announced they would execute Topsy the Elephant by strangulation, poisoning, and electrocution, with the electrocution part ultimately killing the elephant, Edison Manufacturing sent a crew to film it, releasing it that same year with the title Electrocuting an Elephant. As the film business expanded, competing exhibitors routinely copied and exhibited each other's films. To better protect the copyrights on his films, Edison deposited prints of them on long strips of photographic paper with the U.S. Copyright Office. Many of these paper prints survived longer and in better condition than the actual films of that era. In 1908, Edison started the Motion Picture Patents Company, which was a conglomerate of nine major film studios, commonly known as the Edison Trust. Thomas Edison was the first honorary fellow of the Acoustical Society of America, which was founded in 1929. Edison said his favorite movie was The Birth of a Nation. He thought that talkies had spoiled everything for him. There isn't any good acting on the screen. They concentrate on the voice now and have forgotten how to act. I can sense it more than you because I am deaf. His favorite stars were Mary Pickford and Clara Bow. Mining starting in the late 1870s, Edison became interested and involved with mining. High-grade iron ore was scarce on the east coast of the United States and Edison tried to mine low-grade ore. Edison developed a process using rollers and crushes that could pulverize rocks up to 10 tons. The dust was then sent between three giant magnets that would pull the iron ore from the dust. Despite the failure of his mining company, the Edison Ore Milling Company, Edison used some of the materials and equipment to produce cement. In 1901, Edison visited an industrial exhibition in the Sudbury area in Ontario, Canada and thought nickel and cobalt deposits there could be used in his production of electrical equipment. He returned as a mining prospector and is credited with the original discovery of the Falcon Bridge ore body. His attempts to mine the ore body were not successful and he abandoned his mining claim in 1903. A street in Falconbridge, as well as the Edison Building, which served as the head office of Falconbridge Mines, are named for him. Rechargeable Battery Germany. Edison also manufactured aniline dyes, which previously had been supplied by the German Dye Trust. Other wartime products include xylene, p-phenylanediamine, shellac, and pyrax. Wartime shortages made these ventures profitable. In 1915, his production capacity was fully committed by mid-year. Phenol was a critical material because two derivatives were in high growth phases. Bakelite, the original thermoset plastic, had been invented in 1909. Aspirin, too was a phenol derivative. Invented in 1899, it had become a blockbuster drug. Bayer had acquired a plant to manufacture in the U.S. in Rensselaer, New York, but struggled to find phenol to keep their plant running during the war. Edison was able to oblige. Bayer relied on chemist J. Fabric von Hayden, in Piscataway, New Jersey, to convert phenol to salicylic acid, which they converted to aspirin. See Great Phenol Plot it is said that German companies bought up supplies of phenol to block production of ammonium picrate. Edison preferred not to sell phenol for military uses. He sold his surplus to Bayer, who had it converted to salicylic acid by Hayden, some of which was exported. Spirit phone in 1920, Edison spoke to American magazine, saying that he had been working on a device for some time to see if it was possible to communicate with the dead. Edison said the device would work on scientific principles not by an occult means. 
The announcement caused a press heyday, though the actual nature of this invention remained a mystery, as there were no details for some time. In 2015, Philippe Boudoir, a French journalist, found a copy of Edison's diary in a thrift store with a chapter not found in the previously published editions. The new chapter details Edison's theories of the afterlife and the scientific basis by which communication with the dead might be achieved.